Assassin's Creed Origins, being a AAA title in 2017, is almost guaranteed to have some DLC after its release. And if it's to at least minorly follow in the footsteps of previous Assassin's Creed games where this is concerned, that will mean at least one major expansion. Of course, this would be along with many minor DLCs. But to cut the video short for all of your sanity, I'm not going to get into all the minor DLCs because, let's be honest, nobody wants to hear speculation about weapons or outfits and things that will be added in DLC. All you want to hear about is the big one. In order to get a grasp of what we're talking about, we should perhaps take a look at some of the previous major DLCs for Assassin's Creed. Now, Assassin's Creed as a franchise definitely is not the best known for its DLCs, and for good reason. They often feel somewhat half-arsed, if I'm to be frank. Two examples of major Assassin's Creed DLCs that I'd consider average at best would be Jack the Ripper expansion for Assassin's Creed Syndicate and the Freedom Cry expansion for Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. And when I say average at best, I, I, I mean shit. A lot of this arguable loss in quality can be pinned down to one root cause, the weird open world style previous Assassin's Creed games have used. You'd complete one, two or three hours worth of main story DLC content and then be left with a medium sized open world with maybe a couple of side missions, a handful of chests and a busload of animus data fragments and other pointless collectibles that will either drive you round the bend or out of sheer disinterest cause you to stop playing the DLC, making it really not worth the money. Unless you really like running around in circles and collecting things that won't help you in any way whatsoever and if that's you, I'm not judging. Luckily, Origins has changed it up with the open world formula a little bit. The open world of the main game is said to be filled with side quests, which if you ask me, is a lot better than filling the open world with pointless collectibles that don't add anything to your progression. Though having chests filled with treasure and things that actually help as collectibles, that's fine. As long as the collectibles don't take from the experience by taking the side quests, which they have done in previous games and especially in previous DLC. So as long as the side content is more interesting and provides more requirement for brain activity than just to push the joystick down and run around in circles, I'll be fine with it. Now I say this regarding DLC because a lot of RPGs do do DLCs that are set in separate areas to the main game in which filling the world with all this stuff is necessary. However, they could pull a last Maharaja like they did with Assassin's Creed Syndicate, where you have the main story of the DLC questline and not much else. Honestly, not worth a tenner. The ideal major expansion for an RPG does go to its own world space and isn't a part of the main game's world space. Bearing in mind that after a couple to a few months after Origins release, a lot of people will have expired the majority that the open world has to offer. And if everything goes well as far as quality is concerned, they will be after more. Throwing and cramming more quests and things into the already existing world space is one thing that you could do. However, the ideal thing to do would probably to create this new world space. It doesn't have to be particularly massive and have that filled with 6 to 12 hours of main story content, a few dozen side quests, a lot of new treasure to find while you're doing it, stuff like that. Perhaps some new gear as well, stuff that you can get to make it more worth it. Just things to make it worth the money. Already existing RPG games. Fuck, I did the RPG games thing again. Are key examples of how this could be done. For example, we have Skyrim. Skyrim had two major expansions that added quests and things. The first one was Dawnguard, which was mostly set in the same world space as the main game. However, it did have a few new areas and a lot of new side quests among new gear and things as well. However, the Dragonborn DLC added a whole new world space. Dragonborn adds this entirely new world space to explore, filled with new items, gear, locations, dozens of side quests and sites to see among other things. Now this is an above average quality DLC for an RPG, by quite a lot if I'm honest. And in the grand scale of gaming at this point, it's fairly humble in size. Some could say the same about my penis. So if Ubisoft could present something along the lines of this standard for a DLC for Assassin's Creed Origins, then I won't be particularly disappointed. In fact, this is above average, like I said. And since Assassin's Creed Origins is trying to be a DLC of sorts, it would be ideal to see a fairly large-ish main expansion. And this one definitely ticks that box. However, if I were to say that this was the benchmark for RPG DLCs, I would be lying. This is the point where I'm starting to sound like a broken record. 
The Witcher 3's Blood and Wine expansion, which added a massive world space filled with dozens and dozens of quests and many new locations and encounters, new gear among other things that I could list. However, I'd fill up a lot of video time doing that, so let's just cut to the point. Essentially, CD Projekt Red has created a DLC that could easily qualify for its own game. Except they threw it into the already existing The Witcher 3 and just called it a DLC. Which it is, but it's a big one. It is, by definition, the extra mile. The extra 10 miles. The DLC itself is larger than some games, and I hate to admit it, but it's probably larger than some Assassin's Creed games. And I mean that in depth, not world size, although that too is very impressive. If I were to compare Blood and Wine to the Freedom Cry expansion for Assassin's Creed 4, which would be a fairly unfair comparison if I'm honest, Blood and Wine makes Freedom Cry look like it was just someone throwing together assets to see what worked. That's how high quality this DLC was. Nothing compares. Now, I don't necessarily expect a DLC for Assassin's Creed Origins to necessarily match up to Blood and Wine for The Witcher 3, because Blood and Wine is a mastercrafted jaw dropper of a DLC that it's probably the best DLC I've ever played. But I would definitely like to see Ubisoft try to make a relatively decent sized open world specific to the DLC filled with side quests, with treasure, with new gear, with things for us to do, like the main story, and make it not just a couple hours like in previous Assassin's Creed DLCs, but four, five, six, maybe even 12 hours of main story content that's interesting and side quests that are interesting. And with this new take on the open world being more RPG based and a more passionate development team shown by Ashraf Ismail's passion and enthusiasm for the game when he's talking about it, I feel as if they could very well do this when it comes time for an inevitable Assassin's Creed Origins DLC. And I don't mean match up to Blood and Wine, that, that'd be ridiculous. I just mean make a solid DLC for Assassin's Creed because, if I'm honest, I've never been a massive fan of previous Assassin's Creed DLCs, but considering that Origins will probably get one and it'll probably have a massive expansion, I'd imagine that there is room for me to be surprised here. I do however agree that DLCs are nowhere near as important as the main game, so the quality of the main game should always come over the expansions as far as priorities are concerned. However, when it comes to arguably poorly done DLCs, for example Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry to Black Flag, I start to notice flaws in the overall experience and thus I feel as if there's a lot of lost potential, not just in the DLC, but in the main game as well. So when it comes to a time where Ubisoft are making this DLC for Assassin's Creed Origins, which is probably going to happen, not saying that it will, there's been no announcements of it at the time of recording this video, when it comes to it, there's got to be at least some bar for the game, or the DLC at least, to hit. And I'd much rather wait half a year to a year for a really good DLC then wait a couple months for a very half-assed one like arguably Jack the Ripper for Assassin's Creed Syndicate. And then there are people who are probably say in response to this, but if they waited a year, surely they'd be overlapping with the next Assassin's Creed game. Well, hopefully not. You see, in my mind, the next Assassin's Creed game should at the earliest be announced in 2019. I would be much happier if we didn't see an Assassin's Creed game after Origins until about 2020. So as far as I'm concerned, there's plenty of time to smack us in the gobs with an outstanding DLC for Assassin's Creed Origins, which is shaping up to be a really good game. In the past, DLCs like The Last Maharaja, Jack the Ripper, Dead Kings, and arguably Freedom Cry as well, they've been a desperate attempt to keep the game relevant. So with any luck, Assassin's Creed Origins on release shouldn't necessarily need that to keep relevant for longer than a week. Because, if it lives up to what it's cracked up to be, it should be a really good game that can stand on its own two feet and will keep the gaming community talking about it for a few months. You'd hope. And with any luck, it'll live up to that, so Ubisoft, because they're going to want to release the DLC for this game, could perhaps make a DLC but release it sometime mid-2018 and have it smack all of us right in the gobs with how good it is then have two months down the line a DLC that's two hours of main story content and nothing else that's really interesting. So those are my hopes for an Assassin's Creed Origins potential DLC. The first hurdle is getting to like the game, so of course if I like the game I'll play more of it, if I don't like the game I'll still play more of it because I'm an Assassin's Creed fan and I'll play it out of curiosity if nothing else. However, I am quite confident that the game will be at least good, so I'm therefore hoping that 
the inevitable DLC that will follow it at some point, the main expansion, don't care about the weapon packs and things, they can sod off, that's fine. I'm talking about the main expansion here, I'm pretty sure that that will come along, and I'm just making a video here which I made, hoping, talking about my hopes, about what I want really, and I butchered that, but I don't care, it got the point across, what I want it to be, the quality, things like that. And now that that's done, I can go lie down in my bed and die. So. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed this somewhat ramble that started off fairly scripted and then develop, developed into a bit of a mess. Hope you enjoyed, be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share, comment, let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section and things like that. And I will see you all very soon in the next one with another video at some point. So I shall see you all later, goodbye. <laughs>